Hey everyone, I'm Alex Williams and you're watching Fun Again Games. Today we're learning to play West of Africa by Martin Schlegel and Blackfire Entertainment. All right, everyone, let's learn to play West of Africa. In this game, players use action cards, workers, and chips to cultivate crop, sell crop, make settlements, and ultimately become alcade of different islands on the board. The more islands you control, the more settlements you found will move you higher up on the victory track. The player highest up on the victory track at the end of the game wins. Now when setting up your game, everyone starts out with 15 gold. This is represented by placing a marker on the gold track. You'll also place two workers near the La Gomera island on a ship, and your other worker on the other ship near Fuerteventura. I think I said that right? And every player does the exact same thing. You also place another marker on the zero point of the victory track. Last but not least, everybody needs a marker near the turn order track. Another thing you do to set up the game is put settlements on the settlement track. Now each player has their ship, which they will place during their first turn, their stack of goods, which they will use to cultivate on different islands, and their action cards. And now we're all set up and ready to play. Players take turns going through three different phases of gameplay. The first phase is selecting their action cards, which all players do simultaneously. The second phase is executing their actions in any order that they want. And finally, the third phase is the turn end phase. In the first phase, players select up to five action cards simultaneously. When players are done selecting their action cards, they add up the numbers at the top of the card. This will determine who goes first. For example, the green player selected Cultivate Crops, Move Workers, El Hierro, and Move Their Ship, which adds up to 3, 5, 6. The blue player has decided to select 5 cards. The fifth one would cost him 4 gold, moving him 4 spaces down the gold track. With his cards, he selected Sell Crops, Cultivate Crops, La Palma, and Moving Your Ship. We'll find out more about what these cards do later. The fifth card that he has is the minus four card. The player with the lowest number is the player who gets to go first during this next phase. And even though the blue player has used a minus four card, his cards still add up to nine, which is still more than the green player. So the green player will go first, placing his marker on the number one in the turn order track. Now let's go over card actions. After selecting their cards, players may choose to execute the actions on these cards in any order they see fit. They can also use island cards multiple times during their turn in order to cultivate crops on that island as well as sell crops on that island or even build settlements on that island. At the end of their turn, they will take back all of their action cards except the minus card. If they played a minus card, that card gets passed to the player on their left, making it possible for players to accumulate multiple minus fours, thus making it easier to be the first player in the next phase. At the end of their turn, players may place a ship in an empty mooring, which are these light rectangles next to each island. There are seven types of action cards. The first one is the negative four card, which we've already discussed. We also have island cards, one representing each island. We have the sell goods card, we have the cultivate goods card, move workers card, move ship card, and finally found settlements card. We're going to start with the move workers card. When moving workers, players do not need to play an island card to show where they're going. Instead, they have four move points that they can use and split up between their workers. For example, if I'm playing the red player and I want to get two of my players to La Gomera, that takes two points, one for each worker. I still have two points left, so the worker that I have over here near Fuerteventura, I can move to Fuerteventura and then move along the sea tracks 
to Gran Canaria. Now let's move on to the Cultivating Goods action card. When cultivating goods, you take your goods tiles and place them on the goods spaces on the island that you're cultivating on. When you do this, it costs you three gold for each crop that you grow, moving you three spaces down the gold track. When you have workers on the island that you're cultivating on, each worker lowers the cost by one gold. If you use your workers to lower the price of your crop, the workers get moved back to a ship of your choice. When cultivating crops in the central islands, you have several spaces that have dual purposes for either cultivating crops or founding settlements. When using these dual spaces, players must choose between one action or the other. But once a settlement is founded there, it can no longer cultivate crops. Now we're going to move on to the Selling Crops action card. Only goods that are in an island's warehouse can be sold. Each warehouse also lists the price of the goods sold from there. So, for example, if you sold two sugarcane goods from La Gomera, you would get six gold for each one, moving you 12 spaces up the gold track. Now we're going to look at the Founding Settlements action card. Whenever you found a settlement, you take a settlement marker from the settlement track and place it on the island space that you want to found a settlement. It costs to build settlements and the cost of each settlement is listed right on the space where you want to put the settlement. For example, if we put a settlement here in Tenerife, it costs us six gold, moving us six gold spaces down the gold track. Every time you build a settlement, it also moves you three spaces up the victory track. During an entire game turn, in which all the players get one chance to play, you only have the amount of settlements that you have in the game track. For example, if the blue player bought three settlements on Tenerife and the red player bought another three settlements on Gran Canaria, the other two players have no more settlements to choose from. In order to build settlements on an island, you have to be the alcade of that island, which means you have had to have earned one of these tokens in the previous turn. Finally, we come to the Move Ship Action Card. When using the Move Ship Action Card, players can move their ship up to three harbors between islands. Moving a ship is used to move your goods from one warehouse to another. This is important because warehouses in the eastern side of the board sell goods for more than in the western side of the board. Ships can change course during moves, which means they could go from Gran Canaria to Tenerife, pick up goods, and then move two more spots to Gran Canaria and then to Fuerteventura, dropping off their goods in a place that they can sell them for 12 gold apiece. Finally, if a ship ends its movement where there is another ship, that ship will make way and move up the water track to the next harbor. Now that we've gone through all the action cards, we're going to go through the game turn end phase. In this phase, we do five things. First, the person highest up on the gold track gets one victory point. Next, any goods that were cultivated during that turn get moved into the warehouse. Next, we determine alcades of an island by racking up points awarded by how many workers, ships, and goods they have on that island. For example, in Tenerife, the blue player has two workers, one ship, and two goods. The blue player, who has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points, all in Tenerife, is awarded the Alcade token. Next, each player gets one victory point for each island that they're Alcade of. And finally, if any settlements were built during that last turn, the settlement track is refilled. Once one player has reached the 25 mark on the victory track, or 20 settlements have been built, then the game has one more turn to finish up. Once that turn is over, whichever player is highest up on the victory track wins. If there are two players on the same space that are highest on the victory track, the winner is determined by who's higher up on the gold track. So that's it for our video on how to play West of Africa. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and we'll try to get to them. Other than that, this was a lot of fun and remember that West of Africa is only available at funagain.com. Please don't forget to subscribe for more videos on West of Africa as well as a growing number of games from our inventory of over 6,000 titles. Pre-order West of Africa on funagain.com and not only will you get 20% off of your order, you'll also get this West of Africa Extras Pack 
absolutely free.